Hello and welcome back to the channel. This time I'm actually quite excited because we are going to show a hero that I'm actually, you know, I actually enjoy a lot and that hero is Enchantress, right? Enchantress is probably one of my, um, one of my favorite heroes. I really enjoy the hero. Uh, she's a little bit more difficult than the usual guides that we've made so far. For example, Crystal Maiden and Lion. And the reason behind that is because uh, she requires a little bit of micro, but I think that's not really a problem. I myself is, I think, most likely a 10 player, so that's why I got hooked into Enchantress. It's like, it used to be a little bit similar, so if you see, like, I have a lot of 10 and Enchantress games with uh, some decent win rate. And what we're going to do this time is explain fundamentally the hero. So good laning stage, as usual, bad laning stage, and overall the thought process, optimization, and skill build behind every laning stage. We're going to show some pretty good examples as position 4 and position 5 at the same time. Hi, my name is Jeff, AK Raza. Uh, I'm a 6.4k player right now in the Europe in the Euro bracket and my pick was 7k. What we do if you're new to this channel, what we do is we actually show examples of laning stage and we learn about supports fundamentally and we learn how to lane um, as support in the laning stage, how to approach laning stages and how we actually think. This time we're gonna show Enchantress. I think someone requested that. And Enchantress is a type of hero that I definitely um, think that is gonna help a lot of players if you get good with the hero, right? It's a little bit more difficult compared to other supports, of course. But if you get good with the hero and understand the hero, um, it's gonna be a great tool to get you out of the MMR hell that you have right now. In the beginning, it's gonna be a little bit difficult, but hopefully by the end of the video, you'll be able to actually uh, lane as an enchantress um, and hopefully gain a lot of MMR. So without wasting time, let's start the guide and explain the hero fundamentally. All right, let us start the guide and as usual, we're going to start explaining the hero fundamentally to actually start to understand the hero. Okay, so Enchantress is a little bit different than all the other heroes we have seen so far. And the reason behind that is because optimization and skill build can differ from game to game. Okay, unlike Hoodwink, Crystal Maiden, Lion, and dying, you can get any build as Enchantress. For example, you can go for one for one build. You can start with Enchant, you can start with Impetus, you can start with Nature's Attendant. I've seen people going for 0 4 4. It highly depends on the matchup and what you want to do in the game. In the mid game, for example, um, we know what Enchantress is all about. She usually wants to build items that she's not gonna get blown up and then she's gonna restore health to nature's attendant. That's like the one variation or the other one is just pew pew with impetus, get something like a Dragonlance BKB and go a little bit more core. If you're lucky, get some Grove Bow as jungle item. And yeah, that's the plan. Like also if you play from behind, you usually go for full enchant and then you just play puts the creep, you cut waves. I wanna say in the mid game, it is, a lot easier to play Enchantress. The hard thing about Enchantress uh, are actually laning stage, at least in my opinion. Okay, so let's start breaking the hero. The first thing that you need to know is Enchantress is being considered to be a lane dominator. In my opinion, it is not. As I said previously, the hero is quite squishy. Um, she doesn't really trade well with any other support in 1v1, right? And she always needs to adapt to what is her lane partner, right? That's the first thing that you want to see. And the second one is to always see the mid matchup. And Tantra is a type of hero that can actually rotate a lot. Um, she has a level two power spike, like the Enchant level two. Big power spike because it actually gives you one minute to work with the creep rather than 30 seconds. And for example, if you're like from a really far camp, let's say you take a creep here or you take a creep here, by the time you're here, you don't really have a lot of time with Enchant level one. Um, and also, itemization, Windlace, Blightstone, maybe some stats, maybe uh, none of the above, maybe even go for some like Boots. If you're a position 4, you always need to adapt. Um, that being said, let's start with showing a little bit like the example number 1. And here I play Enchantress um, as a position 4, and I get to play with Mars. Now, of course, I choose to go for Blightstone. It does make a lot of sense because I get to play with Mars, a lot of physical damage, we can actually um, burst people down quite easily. And of course, I get to, I know that uh, I play versus AA position 5, who is quite low armor hero. His uh, ancient apparition actually trades quite well with me, right? Uh, this spell is actually quite strong, a lot of damage, um, a lot of slow. 
So what you want to do, and we'll talk about that later on, is actually create two 1v1 situation in this lane. Anyway, um, in Chantress, the way to play the lane, you have actually two options, right? The, what I say, direct, where you just get impetuous and you just pew pew everyone and just shoot them. And the, what I say, indirect, will, which we'll see more intense examples later on on how to play indirect. And I think this is the most solid um, way to play in Chantress. It does require a little bit of micro, but nothing, you know, that is uh, too hard. For me, the hardest thing about Enchantress is to know when you can get away with a kill, when you can actually disengage and so on, okay? Um, so, the game starts and what I want to do is abuse actually the fact that um, Enchantress has quite high movement speed. You can do the same trick with um, if you start with Windlace, but generally Enchantress high movement speed hero. What you want to do is to... Oh, fuck, that's going to take a, a while. It's to what you want to do is place a ward um, over here. Let's go like to see that again. Um, you you place a ward on the opponent's side, and then you just kind of um, have two sentries to the ward. Uh, if you get to see that they have an observer ward as well, of course, two sentries is the way to go. Um, as enchantress, even if you're position five, because most likely this is going to be blocked. They are going to body block this one, so they will not. They don't want to give you, uh, a, you know, a creep from level 1. So, the game starts. Um, I see TA placing a ward. Like, this is like the benefit of having a, an enemy uphill ward. And the game starts, right? Now, Enchantress is a type of hero that, in my mind, is quite squishy. Not in my mind, it's quite squishy. This is why items like... Um, and stats, like, I got Fairy Fire, I got Iron Branches. It makes a lot of sense because... I'm not really gonna trade that well with AA, right? And but on the other side, I know that Mars is really good versus PL. So what I want to do is actually chase the enemy position five, even if I trade a little bit unfavorably. Um, chase the enemy position five and let Mars with uh, PL, you know, one v one, and that's really good with us because we actually scale way better than the opponent. So it's my, like matter of time, matter of levels until we do that, right? So. Um, Placing the word here, now that I think about it, um, this is something I didn't really like. Maybe I would prefer having it here. And nowadays I place it here, so I know if anyone is going to block any of the camps, I'm going to have vision instantly be worth that. And look what happens. This is like a little bit of position four. The way to win lanes, at least, you know, both side lanes, is 2v1 scenario. Really strong 2v1 scenario. Whenever you find the opportunity for two heroes to just gang one hero you always take advantage of that the second one is force when you have a level advantage and if you are in the off lane push a lane side pull bring it here and whenever someone's gonna side pull yeah, to fix the lane equilibrium you just you know focus on the enemy carry and he usually guys and he usually dies and we're gonna see that so you see this guy is alone and look at that let me go my hero i go for level one slow like this is not only this is not only um, enchant creep, it's really good slow, 55% is a lot of slow to actually kill anyone, he's out of position, hit him, and all of a sudden, you see how we just managed to take first blood, right? And what do we do right now? Like, I'm gonna say that in every guide, PL is alone, so we just focus PL, right? Uh, hit, hit, hit all the time, like, whenever we can pressure him, like, um, perfect. And, again... Focus PL, what do we do in the meantime? We try to get level 2. Um, level 2 is a great power spike for Enchantress, and it's quite simple. You have one slow and one nuke, that means you can just 1v1, for example, I can trade with Apparition, and then I can just use Enchant, and Enchant is such a big um, slow that my Mars can literally just, it's like a stun, but my Mars can literally just walk at him, because he's so slow, even if he's so away, and he can just kill him, okay? Ah... Uh, of course, I'm in Chantress. I don't really want to block this camp, right? It makes no sense. I really want this to be a camp that I'm going to take advantage of. And so I just let them pull, which I don't really mind because it's a single, single pull. And of course, the good thing about offlane or the offlane lane is that if the lane is pushed, you can just press around the tower all the time. Okay. So we try to like harass a little bit here. Perfect. And you see how... I, um, I'm, I'm gonna deal with um, AA. Now, what I wanna say is Enchantress usually, usually 
stretch 1v1 not that great. So this is the first set of tangos, but if you want to bring another set of tangos, it doesn't matter if you're a post 4 or 5, the way you approach the hero or the lanes is literally the same. Okay, is is a great idea anyways to bring another set of tangos. And look at that. This is Harpy, probably the most broken, you know, 4 enchanters and 10 um, unit in the game early on. And look what we do. He wants to pull. I'm taking advantage of that. And what's going to happen? This guy is alone. Look at that. This guy is literally alone. And you instantly, I, I want to see how you need to take advantage and give the call to your teammate. Um, you instantly switch and say, hey, this guy is alone. This is, this is not allowed, right? Right? And he just dies. Simple as that. What did you do? You create two 1v1. You know, the lane was actually pushed. This this guy had to actually pull, and all of a sudden we just take advantage of that, right? So, um, again, what you want to do is whenever 2v1, you just take advantage. And the formula is the same, again, again. What's a good thing about us, though, now, is that we are level 3. What does level 3 mean? Level 2 enchant. What does level 2 enchant mean? One minute duration on uh, and like on the creep that means i can take something here 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 and actually walk here or walk in the mid lane okay um also since it is one minute creep something that you need to know is that you can have a creep and you can use enchant at the same time so if you have something like um centaur or something like uh, like the, the ursa um the ursa creep then you can just enchant and then like it's so hard for the enemies to you know dodge the stun or dodge um, the slow from Ursa. Okay? Perfect. And this is something I really want to mention as well. Do you see how the lane is being pushed? I'm like, okay, go aggressive. Like, go aggressive. Why not go aggressive? We even fortify to go aggressive and just let the creep actually do all the work. Right? You see how I'm just we're just playing under tower so intensely, right? And I really want you to see that because people think that the only option when the lane is pushed is to actually side pull. And actually, this is the most solid and the most safe choice. You can't really go wrong, with, you know, pulling the wave back, you know, by pulling. But right now, the other option, let's say you play something like a Wisp, where you have something like a Headrest. You can go under tower, right? You're not probably not going to die. And um, it's the same thing, right? We just play under tower, really aggressive. Of course, have the creep. That's why Enchanter is a little bit unique on that. Look at that, all of a sudden, a lot of damage, a lot of damage on this PL, and this is, the best part about this is that it is free, we didn't really commit anything, we didn't lose health, sure, we invested mana, right, but I mean, this is what, this is why, you know, mana is important, why we, and, you know, if you have to waste something, and all of a sudden, we managed to get this guy here, Mars dies, um, but I think PL already is in a really really rough spot and the more levels we get my mars is like full mana and right now again i'm just dealing with um i'm just trying to deal with pl and level two enchant what does it mean get the creep start rotating okay look from where i get the creep and that's really good you know that's really good and now what you want to do is with this is what i say indirect i don't really want to risk my life it's gonna happen you know you might mess with micro you might like think you're gonna get away but what we try to do here is to make sure that we're gonna screw up with them just by using the creep okay really important also enchantress level 2 enchant can take towers a lot of damage i'm just gonna show numbers a lot of damage a lot of duration a lot of health um and yeah I think at this point we are in a really, really good spot. We have the catapult. Um, and we are about to pressure them, right? At this point, you know, Scarlet Mage rotates. And I think at this point it's really, really um, easy. You know, we're just going to take the tower. Uh, at this point, you you might as well think that, okay. Um, you, might, you might as well think that, uh, oh, okay, I need to... Get a creep, but when you see it, you can actually go and enchant a creep from the enemy creep wave because what you want is the buffs from the creep rather than the creep, right? Um, at this point, you know, you move around the map, you try to do things, for example, um, like slow from enchant is so much, right? And 
um, it's basically stun, right? But again, I really want you to show that um, because you need to be really cautious with it here, right? I go for something like Tranquil Boots because I know that this is not that great of uh, Enchantress game. Like, at least until I get my level 6, I die to everything. Minus armor here from gas, a lot of damage, a lot of damage from um, TA. And make sure that you will never be able to die or at least you'll be careful. Otherwise, you know, here I'm playing on the edge and this is one of the negatives about Enchantress. You think, okay, I'm tanky. Not early on, just like Bristol Elsim. Uh, you know, Slark, uh, Huskar, these heroes, you know, are killable, right? I'm not that tanky at this moment, and this is what you need to be cautious, and this is one of the negatives about the hero, thinking that you're strong, but in reality, you're just not, right? Um, you see, like, how I just die here, but honestly, this type of deaths don't really matter, just because what we want is our position 3 to be really strong. We are gonna find our value later on with the enchant, sieging, and um, I think for me, this is a really good laning stage. And lastly, what you want to do is, whenever, like, if you're position 4 or 5, you just want to make sure that you're gonna have, you're gonna take the tower, right? Um, so you just go to the lane. Ideally, you want to take this tower, right? And again, I'm just showing here, taking the creep, taking the tower, right? At, at this point, um, we take the tower, that means my Mars can move, and I think it, this is a really, really solid laning stage for us, just because uh, we kind of got our levels, we're level 4, level 5, we're gonna get home of XP, probably we're gonna go full enchant here, maybe level 3 and start getting our nature's attendance, um, and at this point, if you see net worth, I think we're in a really, really fine spot. I'm not saying that this lane is stomp, this lane at least, it's not stomp, but I think it's really, really solid. Uh, so the game plan for me is quite simple right now. Probably I'm gonna go full enchant and try with the Mars scrap with the enemy um, enemy jungle here. Maybe take this tier one. And what we want to do is create space for anti mates, which is gonna be a little bit hard because um, they have a lot of health. It's a lot of damage that we need to output. So maybe this is one of the games that something like Force Up or even Pike later on because they don't really have a way to get to me if I'm in the back line. You know, they don't really have. Sure, you know, they can just blink on me, but I think uh, they're gonna struggle if I'm a little bit tanky and have, some, have something like a pike, they're gonna struggle a lot. Um, th I think this is a fine laning stage to see how enchanters work. Um, and let's jump to a position 5 game that I think is also quite beneficial and I think is gonna be really helpful in the end. Position 4 and 5 don't really make a difference, so let's jump into an example like that. Okay, this is game number two, and we're gonna show an example as Enchantress position five. Right now, I have a Shadow Fint as a position one, and what I'm gonna face is a Centaur and a Rubik. If you don't know, this is like a lot of damage generally, so I need to be quite careful. I chose to go for a Blightstone, and that is mainly because I get to play with the Shadow Fint, okay? Um, that means a lot of minus armor. You know, if you get to play right click Shadow Fint in the safe lane, usually they go Presence of the Dark Lord, and if you are unfamiliar with that, and if you are afraid, you can also go for Windlace, it will not make that big of a difference. Starting items are the same as a previous game. I go for Blightstone and I go for one sentry um, to mostly make sure that... Um, I'm, I want to make sure that at least one of the two camps are going to be um, not blocked, right? Uh, I did see the Rubik there. Sadly, I didn't really get to see if he has something like observers or sentries. He left really fast. And pretty much the lane starts. As an enchantress, I really suggest you not to go for the rune unless you have something like a juggernaut, something like that's really strong, maybe something like a, a troll. Um, and right now you get to see what does this guy has. He has a lot of stats. And Rubik is a type of hero that if he has stats, he can trade really good with him, right? But I want Rubik to use Fade Bolt on me. Not on Sadofint, because if you see the damage difference, you see Sadofint, he even go for all this crap of load of stats, right? It's a little bit meme. Um, and Center has a gazillion like, damage. He can easily out CS my SF. So if on top of that, you just get Fade Bolt, it's impossible, right? So what I want to do is screw up with this Rubik as much as possible, right? Perfect. You see how we create two 1v1? And for me, like, this doesn't really make sense. He Fade Bolt me. And I'm like, I need to fight back. Otherwise, I'm just going to die, right? Okay. He uses Fade Bolt all of a sudden. So what does this mean for me? He has Ward there, okay? We do Ward that. 
really beautiful. And you see how I instantly brought more tangos. We had two tangos, right now we have uh, five tangos. The reason why we do that, you know, the, the explanation is we don't really trade good with Rubik. We just kind of have to do it, you know, at least until we get a creep. And right now what we want to do is get level two. And once we have level two, we are going to indirect again, approach this lane, right? We get level two. They are level two and level one. That means we have one more spell than them, right? Look at that. This guy's out of position, enchant, a gajillion second um, slow, which is like practically stun. And look at that. I really want you to, to see that. Whenever you have a range here in the lane, and this is quite obvious in the, um, you know, in the position three heroes that are ranged. Let's say you have a Wind Ranger. Let's say you have a Pagna. Let's say you have a Necrophos. And you combo that hero with something like a Tusker, a Clockwork. Let's say Clockwork. Clockwork needs to always be in front of the ranged hero, right? Otherwise, it's so hard for the ranged hero to tank two heroes. You need to always be nearby if you're a position four. Um, to make sure that you're going to protect your pos range position 3. But the same thing applies for the position 4 and the position 3. If the position 4 is range, for example, and you have a melee position 3, you need to play behind him, right? This is what I mean. Look at that. You see that? He's not behind center. And all of a sudden, we just right-click him down. We don't even use spells. We just right-click him down, right? Because he went out of position. Perfect. Now, I get to. I'm gonna say some also enchantress tips. So I'm gonna take these golems. Golems is probably our best brand. Uh, after harpy, we live. We just love golems. Why is that? Because you can get to use stun, and when ne whenever the duration from mad golem ends, you're gonna have two mini mad golems anyways, right? And you're gonna see what I mean right now. So you can also do an old trick where you just go to the mid lane. Throw the ball and then you just enchant a lane creep and then the golem actually dies and you have the small the two small mini golems as well to use stun. We single pull. The reason why we single pull is what? Guess what? To actually bring the lane back and to actually force again the same um, situation. Single pull is our friend. Look at that. I'm just trading. I'm I'm really really careful, right? Look what I'm doing right now. I really want you to see that. Why can I play so cocky? Because I know that Rubik is still level 1. And also, look look what happens with the golems. I'm just going to show the golem duration. One second. Boom. And then I have the two mini golems. That means another 75 damage and another 75 damage. And all of a sudden, look how much damage I do to its center. Right? All of a sudden, as a position 5. Now, here's something I really want you to, to discuss. The lane is pushed. Now, I have two options. Either, like, let's say, pull this one or pull this one if that was an option. Or, generally, pressure under tower, which is, like, not that great. I mean, it's a center under Rubik, right? Let's open it. The center under Rubik. And look what happens to this guy. I can't really do anything about that. Like, I know that this is a common problem about the position 5s. Oh, my carry dies when I go to pull. Well... You can't really do anything about other like the other option is to not do anything and the creep wave is gonna be a here infinite, right? So you can't really do something about that. Continuing though, we get the creep, and what we do is level two, that means we wait for the enchant, right? Look at that. We just wait, we casually chill, right? And what we want to do ideally is to find someone to actually use enchant. Look at the center. Slow. And we just kill him. Out of position, 2v1 scenario. Rubik. We hit him, hit him, hit him again and again. Why? Because he's solo. Right? And what do we do right now? Get the other Mad Golem. Right? And again, Mad Golems are our friends. And look what happens. I also went for, apparently I went for raindrops. Probably because I felt I'm going to die. Um, and look what look what's going to happen. This is, I think this is how the, um, this game should end. I'm like 1v1, 1v2, sorry, and I'm just fighting them, and this is what I mean, look at that. So 1v2, literally, with level 2 
Enchant is really, really solid. I really want you to show that again. And actually, I'm going to show that from their perspective um, because I think that's some really cool plays and it shows why a hero like Enchantress requires uh, creativity, right? They try to kill me. I just Enchant. I use both. Like, I hit both of them. I get the XP. I die, but then it just doesn't matter, right? And then we just solo kill this guy. Like, the creeps. I think it's really beautiful in the end. If you see the net worth, we are doing insanely good, insanely good. I'm just going to show one more minute. Um, and the good thing about Enchantress is that, you know, you don't really require that much consumables. You can go for something like Boots as long as you have mana um, to work with your Enchant and your Impetus. Because Impetus actually is a lot of mana. So I don't really suggest, um, you know, w using it that much, you know, casually. At this point, I think we are really good. Um... And this guy is out of position, you know, we just try to punish this guy. Um, Shadow Summon comes, I think this Laming Sage is by far one. Uh, and I think that, you know, I can't say that we have a better lineup, let's say a better duo, because Shadow Fiend, I want to say, is quite passive, you know, all he has is right click, even though he has a minus armor. But it's up to you as an Enchantress to be creative and make Laning Stages work. Let's jump to another example, though, to see... Sometimes you have to be even more creative and um, we're going to see another way that you can be creative, you know, other ways, other examples that you need to, you know, work yourself, work your mind to see how you can make this landing stage work. So let's jump into that and see what's going on. Okay, this is example number three and this is Enchantress position five, right? This is one of the games that I'm actually really proud of um, and really happy with the outcome because... It was a really hard lane and I feel like I solo won this, so I think it's quite good and I feel like I was quite creative, okay? So, I start with Blightstone and um, I know that I'm gonna have OD, enemy OD as position 3. I have the last pick spec because we knew we are gonna have Tinker, they are gonna have Tinker. And the reason why I go Blightstone is not because it makes sense on OD, no, just because I don't know what is their position or, but I know with both the heroes that they have low armor. So what I thought is maybe trade, you know, I'm not really, I think I'm going to trade really well with Wyvern because Enchantress actually trades way better with Wyvern. I'm going to be a little bit in position. I know that my spec is not really going to have that good time, but once I have level 3, um, you know, maybe I can enchant or actually level 2, you know, I'm going to enchant someone. Uh, we're going to have, we're going to use Dagger anyway on, um, on the Wyvern or the Apparition and we're going to find the kill, right? So... Uh, I place to have a label award here to see, you know, what's going on here, um, to have a little bit more vision. Uh, I like these wards generally here and here because I get to see right now if they're going to block this camp or this camp a little bit. And the lane starts, right? Perfect. You see, two sentries. I used one in the mid lane and right now I'm going to buy another one. And of course, I bought a fairy fire, a little bit more damage. And of course, Enchantress, not that high health hero. So playing on the edge can be a little bit difficult. So what you want to do is actually have a little bit of an extra boost. And I think a fairy fire is always solid um, in Enchantress to pick it up later on. Okay, so the, the game starts, right? So what I want to do is play on this side of the map. Usually... If, if they if they had something like Spirit Breaker, Clockwork, Task Card, usually they were to be the ones that they're going to play, play here. And if that was the case, I would probably have something like Windlace to make sure that will never catch me. Maybe right-click them or maybe even go and focus OD, right? And I go for Nature's Attendance level 1. I really want you to see that. I feel like in Petus, I'm not really going to do that much. But with uh, Nature's Attendance, I can actually make something do because... I know that my right click matters, but look at that. One hit from OD, and I, I, I'm out, right? It's simple as that. I really want you to see that. Boom, like 130 damage. It is insane, right? So at least Nature Attendance level 1, I'm just I'm just using my right click as a resource of damage. It's I really want you to understand that every right click matters in this cancer matchups, honestly. This is like OD players. Like, it's so hard, right? Look at that. This one is blocked. I'm fine. I'm like, okay, finally, I'm gonna right click this guy. And what do we want to do right now? Get our level two. Get our level two, of course, right click as much as possible. Right? Once we have level two, then maybe, maybe we can do something right now. Right clicking. And how, why do we play so aggressive? Look at that. 
Why do we play so aggressive and we trade inside the creep wave? Because I know that OD is alone right now. Do you see how I know like Wyvern is here? So I'm like, okay, right click as much as possible. Be aggressive as much as possible because we are not going to have a lot of opportunities. I'm going to be honest, the more levels both of the duos get, the harder it's going to be. Okay. And of course, um, side pulling here, get level 2 and right now, Get the creep. Get the creep with the biggest nuke and of course start using it. Right? Double the spell here. Like whenever you find opportunities to use one spell that's gonna actually harass two enemies, go for it. And look at that. I'm just I know that OD is not that great versus Enchantress, right? Because OD usually struggles against summon units like Red King Skeletons, like and Wolves. He struggles in the lane versus that. And look at that. I'm just trying to be aggressive with the hero in the meantime. Uh, with a creep in the meantime with my main hero i'm just side pulling and um i'm just trying to keep them busy and i think that's really good i'm gonna show cs i think we're doing actually fine this elaine we even get the kill this elaine that's supposed to be really 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 hard and i really want to go back to actually see the whole process we get the creep one we, we need to micro that two and you just hit the wyvern again and again or you just hit whoever you can because this lane that even if it goes even it's like we won right if this lane actually goes even we have the same goal it's actually won and of course we right click out of position wyvern and we just find kill right really 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 good kill here and of course what we want to do is get the creep level three that means level two and sand and all of a sudden i have a whole minute before i had only 30 seconds to make something happen right now i'm actually so chill i'm like no it, it's so easy to play right now okay they they, they have to pass this creep right there you go let me let me show you what's going on again they try, let's go a little bit back. They try, I'm, I'm gonna like play, play it slow. They try to hit me and okay. I really want, what I'm, I was trying to do is actually find, uh, because I know Wraith King is really good versus OD, just because it has a skeleton, it's just too much damage. What I try to do is actually create skeletons. I'm like, I'm gonna create the same scenario with another hero. So what you want to do is like, okay, uh, that's not gonna happen, too much damage. And all of a sudden, you know, net, hit, hit, and, and Chant, of course, and he's dead. Simple as that. I was really happy about this lane stage. You know, I'm like, okay, we're doing it. And of course, what do we do? Pull the crypts back and create, if, if I can do it, please, uh, and create the same scenario. And you see how we just casually harass. Every right click matters. Now we get center. We're going to work with the center. Now someone might say, but Jeff, you know, they, they didn't block this camp. They didn't block this camp. Okay, if you're level three, you can work with this you know, creeps. If you're level 2, then that's why you need the sentries, to unblock one or the other. You need something to work with. If that doesn't work out, maybe you even go, let's say I went for a nature's attendance level 1, maybe you go for impetus level 2, but I don't really recommend that. I want you to have a level 2 enchant by level 3. I think that's really solid. I'm pulling here. In the meantime, you see how I'm just checking with my center to play aggressive. The lane is pushed, like you see how the lane is pushed right now. And on top of that, we actually pulled, so in the end, what I want is my spec to actually farm um, under tower, and I'm just, I, I want to create that, I want to give my spec free farm, right? And there's no end, like, <laughs> um, again, okay, you see how they block this camp right now? I'm like, this block this camp, okay. Right now, I'm just going to work with something else. Now, you have two options. You can all, uh, either go for that, Mana Burn, which is okay. Most likely, I'm going to use it on Wyvern because oh, they can, you know, um, generate mana. Or you can go for something like Purge, which I think is it's also really solid. Um, just because duration 5 seconds, cooldown 3 seconds. That means if you Purge someone, they can never leave. You know, you can, all, uh, you can actually kill him if you have the damage, of course. Of course, we go for raindrops. Great item versus OD. Uh, great item generally versus heroes that only has one spell to proc it, like um, OD, Wyvern, um, Wind Ranger. You know, this type of heroes is really good. Look at that. Hit him. 2v1 scenario, this guy's alone. I feel quite confident. L and look at that. Look at that. 
Do you see how I don't really have a skill point yet? I'm like, okay. If I don't skill right now heal, I'm probably gonna die, you know. And right now I'm just playing full aggressive because I know they don't have enough damage to kill me. Um, and again, again, I'm gonna take... Right now, I felt like, okay, maybe we actually tried to kill because they actually don't really have that much health. You know, maybe that's doable. You see how I pull because level 2 enchant means I have all the time in the world to do something. You know, to, to make something happen. And right now... I think the lane stage is actually in a really good situation. This guy is out of position. We try to kill him. There you go. Let's go again. To see that from his perspective, right? Let's uh, Just because... Um, I really want you to see that. He gets purged. That He gets enchant. And then he just gets purged again and he just dies. Level 6 spec. 7 minutes in. That is insane, right? This is really good work from us really good combination and pretty much that is all us um lastly now um we do the same thing seven minutes in jungle items we try to you know pull create the same scenario and i think at this point um it is really really uh, you know you, you just start to get it at this point you know my spec is back he tp'd i can actually gank um i think we're in a really really good um um, really, really good situation here. The fact that I just die here means absolutely nothing. I think this is a really, really uh, one lane, in my opinion. You know, um, eight minutes as Mitro Hammer as OD versus Spec is insanely slow. I think we did a really, really great job here. And of course, right now, um, I can get to move, for example, play with my Queen of Pain, try to find something, penetrate to the enemy jungle, uh, make sure I'm gonna block this camp for Tinker because he's gonna farm it. I think. You, most players get that, but the problem is how to make Enchantress reach at the point where she has a fine or good laning stage. Really proud of this game. I think that's really good. Really, um, um, really satisfied with the performance here because I, I felt like I was creative. And let's jump to another game to see how you can also be creative. And yeah, let's go into that. Okay, let us start. That is example, I think, number four. And again, we play Enchantress position five. And you see how itemization is a little bit different right now? I get to play versus... I, I, first of all, I have, I think... What was that? Yeah, Kunkka. I have a Kunkka post 1 because, you know, Tinker in the mid lane, that means I'm going to play... As we said in the beginning, what we want to see is our matchup, a duo matchup, and what we want to see is our um, mid lane matchup. So right now, I'm gonna, I chose to go for Windlace instead of Blightstone, mainly because I get to play versus double melees. NS and Spirit Breaker, they can never reach me, you know, or they have to invest a lot of time. And of course, I told you in the other guys that you should just walk here casually and see what happens. I saw Spirit Breaker, most likely he's going to place the worst here, uh, place a word here, otherwise why would he be there? Um, so what I thought is, you know, maybe I'm gonna give my Kunga the free XP from the ward, but I'm like, fuck it, I need my level 2, I need my level 3, so I told him, can I get the free XP, please? Um... And the game starts, right? As you see, lane ward, sentries, and more tangos. So this is a matchup that we are definitely supposed to win. But sometimes when you get to play versus double melees, like and Sandra is similar to all the other position five in that sense. If two heroes are in front of my face, I'm just gonna die. There is no way I'm gonna turn this back, right? So it starts, and what do we do? Right click, right click, right click all the time, right? Um, of course, look at my position. I don't really want to go play here. I want to play nearby my Kunkka. And as long as I'm inside the creep wave, Spirit Breaker will struggle to trade with me. So he doesn't really, he can't really do anything else. You see how I'm just like movement speed? I really want you to see that. How cold I can become with the wind lace because I get to play versus double melees. Let's say I play versus something like Venomancer or Wind Ranger. I can't really go with that. And then I'm just right clicking. Okay, creep wave come to here comes. I'm like, okay, I'm out of here. Easy. That's one of the things, that's why I say indirect way to play in Chandra's in the lane. And look at that. I don't have a skill point yet. I really want to see if I'm going to have this free, then, okay. All of a sudden, enchant, and then we just hit this guy, right? I even went for Impetus, right? Because I felt like I don't really want to heal here. I feel like it's not really that great, right? Um... It's not really that great because I feel like I need more damage here to deal with these guys, right? 
this guy is out of the is out of the lane because we actually pressure him a lot. In the meantime, Kunka vs NS, really simple matchup, really easy matchup, and look at that. Look what happens. In my opinion, uh, I should probably enchant first, then torrent, because enchant is like so much low you can't really miss a torrent. And all of a sudden, 2v1, we just kill this guy. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay. Trying to stack this one. Why do we stack this one? Maybe we find the uh, harpy that we said in the beginning. But what we can do right now, and the way to play against NS is to actually uh, pressure him a lot until level, until minute 5. Then when it's night time, it's a little bit more um, difficult for me, right? So you see how I'm, I'm gonna like I grab the aggro again and just deny as much as possible because I want a level 3. You can see I really want this script. I really want this script, but I want to have it for a whole minute to work with. So maybe I'm gonna be level 3, use enchant level 2, get the creep, wait for the enchant cooldown, and find the kill, okay? You see, I don't really wanna enchant yet. They try to go on me. I just disengage. Perfect. I'm just stacking this one. I want you to see that it all combines, right? Denying a full creep wave, lane ward, and let us show again what happened the last 20, like 30 seconds, okay? So we, we wait for a level 3 to get an enchant level 2. I get attacked on, but they don't really have a lot of damage, right? I go for enchant level 2 here, you know, I'm thinking, I'm thinking about impetus. I'm actually thinking about it, right? But I'm like, it's not worth it because level 4 is way far ahead. Okay, I went for the kill there, didn't work out. And this is what that means, you know, having wind plays or having boots. You understand that you will most likely not gonna die. Okay, that's why you get to get away with these items. And of course, what do we get right now? Look at that. I went out, out of all the creeps, I went for the satyr because I feel like we have enough damage to actually make something happen. Perfect. Do you see how they just go on me? Look at that. So much time wasted. Honestly, so much time wasted. Even if I die here, it doesn't matter. Look at that. I'm gonna show like CSYs. So much time wasted. I think I probably could have played a little bit better, like, um, you know, being great there and turning back. But look at that, so much time for my Kunkka to actually farm, right? They're just wasting so much time. And just to get, what, like 150 gold, 200 gold, just doesn't matter. Going back to the lane, guess what we're going to happen? Yes, I know it's um, night time, but I feel like we're quite far ahead. I get in the creep, X, 2v1. And look, so much damage, and I think at this point my Kunga is in a really, really good spot. And the reason why I can tell that is because, look at that, NS, he's only level 4. If he was level 5, I would struggle. My Kunga is level 6, 5 minutes in. That means we we gave him a, like a lot of kills and a lot of time and a lot of free farm. And we have our level 3 power spike, so we can actually work with that. At this moment, you know, you can actually, let's say, leave the lane, stack for the Kunga. Rotate for the runes, deny bound runes, you can feel, you know, you can do whatever you feel like. I feel like I'm supposed to deny that. Um, and at this moment, you know, leaving the lane, I'm just gonna show like the, the next minute, moving around the map. Um, center, scouting if they have some lane ward, and of course I'm on the top uh, lane right now, and what we do is, you know, probably I'm gonna rotate. Um, and we just find the kill. From now on, we just start moving. I think that's a really, really one laning stage if you see the CS um, that Kunga has and NS has, and of course, 2k net worth. That's all. That's all us, actually, right? Of course, Kunga played good, but of course, we helped him. Uh, we didn't really get caught, and if we did die once, it was... They, 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 what's the word I'm looking at? They paid. They paid the price. That means they wasted a lot of time. Obviously, did not worth it. Okay, um, let's jump to one last game that I think is also really solid. We get to play versus Viper position three, which is really, really hard as a matchup. So uh, let's see that game, and I think it's also quite creative. So let's uh... welcome back, and that is the next example that I want to show. And I think that's probably probably gonna be the last example as position five, and then I'm gonna show one more example as position four. 
right now I get to play with the Manji King. Enchantress Manji King, really strong combo, right? It's quite simple. Enchant, a Godzilla second slow, Jingu, guaranteed to actually get four hits, boundless strike, it's a kill, right? There is only one problem right now, and that problem is we get to play versus Viper, right? Viper, really good counter to Manji King, really good counter to Enchantress. He has only one weakness that we need to take. Um, that we need to actually take advantage of that. And that weakness is he sucks level 1. He's just so squishy, right? And we even call Bounty Hunter to gank him in the bot lane. So what do we do? I even say to my support, to my other support, I need the ward bot. I need to see where is Tiny and when is Viper from the first second to actually know when they're gonna split to actually run at him, okay? So we make an attempt to kill him here. Sadly, it doesn't work out, but the idea is correct, right? I go for enchant level 1. Um... We place the lane ward, everything goes according to the plan, and right now we have to be a little bit more creative. So, this is why I go Blightstone, if you see Viper, not that much of armor, right? And not that much of movement speed. So, here's what happened. I really want to, I really want to kill, so we kind of be creative, and this is how we, like, figure out the way to do it. I'm in a duo stack right now, so... Um, probably that's not gonna happen in the game, but I want you to show the idea of playing against Viper as post 3. Kill him level 1. Look at that. And we just killed him. That's it. Right? I wanna say the laning sage is actually over at this point, right? Um, just because Viper, he doesn't have a TP. Right now, it's just so hard. My job is to do what? Boo them 1v2, and my Mind King King is gonna have a really, really, uh, solid time. Harpy. Um, use Harp, of course, right now. I got Dillon damage, right? And I think at this point, uh, we're in a really, really good spot. You see how I can play a little bit more aggressive because I know that Viper sucks level 1. I also know he has Nether Toxin. What does this mean for me? He can't really run me down with Viper. Um, with uh, what's called Poison Attacks, right? And that's why I can actually go a little bit more aggressive into the Creep Wave. We have the level 2 Power Spike. They're still level 1, so I can go full aggressive. And I think that's really solid. Of course, important to mute uh, guys that don't speak English. Uh, really solid advice, you know, 6K advisor, how to be immortal, mute uh, non-English speakers, right? At this point, you see how I'm just playing here? Look at that. How aggressive I'm playing, and I really want you to see that. If they were level 2, I was dead. But I know they're level 1. I know he has nether toxin. And I'm thinking, okay, what's the worst thing that he has? He can have, like, even if he has toss, like... He can toss me back, it doesn't matter. He has Avalanche, okay, most likely I'm gonna survive. And right now, we just run him down, enchant, lift the kill to my carry. At this point, I think I'm really good. Um, all I all I need to like be careful about is to bring more consumables and to actually make sure that we have a lot of health. Other than that, you know, um, the fact I'm just dying here that means absolutely nothing. I'm having my level 3. And probably I shouldn't have died there, but I think it, yeah, we said, you know, we're cool. We're so far ahead. It just doesn't matter. Um, getting my level 3, and right now, you see, I can go to this camp. doesn't have anything interesting. Um, I'm, so I'm just going to pull this one. Um, ideally, yeah, I should probably take that using the Weirwood. And then, yeah, that's it. I think that's really good. And look at that. I really want you to see this one last thing. See how comfortable I'm playing. I have a toss, but they have nothing. Poison attack level 1, level 2, it's not enough. I'm really fast as a hero, so I can just casually disengage. And I think at this point, uh, we're in a really, really good spot. 8 denies is actually as much as Viper um, last hits overall. Um, and you see how one creep just bullies them all. I think that's a really good example. Um, the only thing that you need to be careful is like... I think I just fucked up here with the creep. I uh, should probably actually... Um, I should probably pull this way because I have an extra, so I can have an extra uh, jungle creep. And right now, I think my viper, my sorry, my manking is in a such comfortable place that I can just get the gun with my um with my bounty bounty hunter. And then look at that, enchant. We we'll just run him down, enchant the Godzilla in seconds. And then if you see, we we'll just roam around the map with my bounty hunter. Really good going bot. I think it's quite solid. Um, you just, I'm just gonna go fast forward a little bit just to see what's going on. We just run them down. Three heroes. We have the creep to actually absorb all the damage from the tower. I go for um, nature's attendance. I feel like we have enough damage 
I'm just going like really fast and I think that's the last clip I want to show from this game is that look what creep I'm actually choosing. We have a lot of damage. What we lack here, Bounty Hunter, Lena and Enchantress, we don't really have slow and we don't really have um, setup for Lena stun. So here's what happens. You see? Oop. So you see how the purge actually works here? Run them down. At this point, I think um, the game is quite simple from this uh, at this point, right? Let's go to the last game I want you to see. Uh, as position four this time, and I want you to to show that sometimes even bad matchups, if you play them correctly, you will actually have success. Sometimes you'll see that I made mistakes, and I'm gonna call them out. But again, it's a hero that you have to be creative, and of course, you need to know a lot about you know fine micro to work around creeps and to know the weakness of the heroes. So let's jump into our last clip and see Enchantress last game as position. This is the last game that I'm gonna show. Right now I'm in Enchantress position four. Yeah, I'm position four. My starting items is Windlace. I wasn't really sure what the heck I was gonna have in the safe lane, what I'm gonna face. Is it the Razor? Is it the Side of Hint? Is it the Light Slayer? What I, th I thought also is gonna be a Tasker position five. It ended up being Hoodwing, so I'm like, okay, I want if if I get caught by Tasker, you know, with a uh, level one with um, tag team, I want to be able to disengage. So I'm usually um, I'm actually smoking. The reason why I smoke, like in other games, I didn't smoke to put an enemy up toward, is mainly because Shadowfiend, if that was a mid laner, has a lot of movement speed, so he can actually find me. You know, even if I if I have a lot of more movement speed, he has a lot of movement speed as well as a hero, so he can actually see me. You know, walking back. That was the first word that I placed, and the second one's here, of course, to get to see if something is, is about to happen. And look what happens here. I'm like, dude, you're an S, give me vision. And we see, do you see that hole here? He placed, probably, probably, uh, we thought he placed an, um, a sentry. Anyway, um, we got to see Sadofin here. So we maybe he placed a word. And the game starts. Enchant, we skill Enchant level 1 to get first blood, right? And. Really good start for us, really good start for us. Uh, and finally, the dual lane is revealed. It is a Hoodwing 5 and a Lifestealer position 1. Now, this requires a lot of thought, because if I knew I was going to have a Hoodwing, if you've seen my Hoodwing guide, this hero doesn't trade well. So probably I would go for something like Bloodstone. And if I had Hoodwing versus Enchantress, I would all also go for a Bloodstone, right? And the one that actually has more consumables and find better opportunities to use spells would be the one that's going to win the trade-off. But I went for Windlace and now I have a Lifestealer versus NS, which is really rough as a matchup. It was a last pick Lifestealer into... Uh, they probably thought Dawnbreaker was a position 4, so he picked Lifestealer into double strength. But right now I know, I know that Lifestealer, he has one weakness, he's not that strong early on. He's not that tanky and he doesn't regenerate a lot of, you know, lifestyle. So the game starts. I have enchant level 1. So what do we want? Is probably we wait for the camp at minute 1. And get an um, impetus on level 2 to actually pew pew. Only the lifestealer. Most likely we're going to pew pew. We're going to impetus the lifestealer. Why is that? Impetus, a lot of damage, a gajillion mana. You can't have a lot of impetus inside the laning stage, so you might as well use them on the enemy position one. If you feel, if you feel you have kill potential, so it starts right early on. I think NS has a lot of damage. You see how he has a lot of damage, so we don't really struggle in one v one. Maybe he gets some right click offs. Like I think Life Stealer is way stronger than NS once he has level two, three, four. But level one we can just chill, right? He's not that strong. So you see how I'm just trading with this guy, trading, trading, and we have actually unblocked this camp. So what does Hoodwing does? Smartly, he tries to block it. And of course, he can't block both of the camps. I was lucky, I got the um, Harpy and Pew Pew. Why do I Pew Pew instantly? Because if you instantly, if you instantly use Chain Lightning, then you can, before it expires on level 1 and Chang, with level 1 and Chang, you can actually get to use it before it actually expires, okay? So, what do we do right now? Pew pew this guy. Hit, hit, hit again, again. And a lot of damage, right? Perfect. Right now, creep advantage. 
we cancel chill we impede the life sealer why do we impede the life sealer in my mind life sealer is like necrophos if he's full health he'll just destroy you if he's low health though and he can't actually contest creeps then the hero sucks just like necrophos okay just similar to necrophos so chilling i'm trying to stack this camp to see what other um creep might spawn here smartly this guy goes for scary you know to actually block my camp and here's what we do golem golem our best friend and here's what happens hit hit in the meantime if they were like smart they would like they should actually focus on my ns here look at that like this guy is alone right he should just start running and just focus this guy he's alone i don't know why they don't do it but this is how you win slime you, you, you actually win lane right i'm back with the golem and of course impetus always on the life stealer pew pew throw rocks on the life stealer and then i want this i don't mind if this script dies because it has a small duration right so before it dies i can actually like let's say feed it a little bit it's not that much of gold right you see how i carefully do not feed it and look what happens boom one rocket and then this guy is actually low health all of a sudden right and right now here's a good part with all this space that we created what does hooding forgot we actually got this camp now we have this wild wing um thing i don't know how it's called with a cyclone which i think is probably one of the worst creeps if not the worst right but you know I got lucky, Harpy, Golem, you know, I can't actually complain. So you have to work with what you have. And right now, look at that. I said, okay, I'm just going to throw that on this um, Life Slur face. I don't really mind because the lane is being pushed. And here's what happens. This Cyclone follows the um, follows, um, Life Slur. And I felt like NS was a little bit mad. F NS was a little bit out of position. And look at that. This guy's totally out of position. A lot of damage. And let's go back a little bit to, to see what happens again. Because this is one of the kills that we actually, three minutes right now, we kind of build it. You know, we, we win fight, tradable fate, tra sorry, tradable. Um, we, we trade way better with the opponents. What's the word I'm looking for? Tradable? I don't know. We just trade better with the opponents, right? And all of a sudden, in our attempt to actually do that again, they didn't respect us, and then pew 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 hit a lot. And then he just dies, right? Of course, look at us as well. Very fire. Enchant. Very fire. I went too greedy here to hit. Doesn't matter. Got the XP, got the kill, and as we said in the very beginning, you want to see two things. The matchup in the offlane or in the safe lane, depends on what you are, and the mid matchup. And it is Queen of Pain versus Shadow Fiend. If I enchant and poison dagger, dagger poison, poison attack, what's called Shadow Strike, oh fuck me, man. Then you, uh, he can't escape. There is only one downside Queen of Pain, dude, just get level two dagger, you play versus Shadow Fiend, and you have an enchantress, right? Here's what happens. Um, TP right now, bottle, you know, fill his bottle. And I felt like you have two options right now. I felt like I didn't really perform that well. In one minute, it's night time. And I felt, okay, night time, I can actually make something happen. So I just rotate in the mid lane. I don't know what was that actually. Let's go back to see my Queen of Pain here. Okay. Um... Anyway, I felt like he could just wait a little bit. I'm coming from behind. I get the kill. Like, that was not the best from Queen of Pain. What can I do? Free XP for me. You see how I keep the skill point? I'm not really sure what I'm gonna need. And right now, it's night time. I have two options. Stick to the mid lane, which I felt this is what I was supposed to do, because Life Stealer is not that great of a hero versus Terrorblade. But, you know, if it's a magical side of him, then maybe he... As it was the case, eventually. Then he just blew... He's just gonna blow up my Terrorblade, right? So I felt, okay, focus this guy, it's easier to kill a Shadowfin with a Queen of Pain rather than a Lifesteader with an NS, even if it's night time, right? I die here, but the plan is, in my mind, make sure that this Shadowfin is gonna have a hard time 
Um, I feel like I just kind of abandoned my NS in the top lane, but you see how every move I do from now on is uh, to, to shut down the Shadow Fiend. I don't really care about Life Sealer, right? I mean, I have Queen of Pain, I've done very, like, I have Heroes, of, you know. It's a fine Life Sealer game, it's not that great, you know, but I feel like Third Blade is really good. Um, so I feel like if the carry matchup is good, I might as well shut down the only hero that's good versus my carry, which is Terrible. Kill this guy, and right now we just move around the map, you see. I have a lot of time. I know that this guy doesn't have TP because we just killed him, right? Um, so I might as well just move to the top lane, and this is where we screw things up. In my mind, it is too late to do that. Honestly, just too late. Movement speed, I feel like so bad execution from both of us. Because look at Hoodwink here. Um... I'm like, um, we can kill him in the meantime, like, so bad coordination, the two of us, we just fit the skill, and I realized right now, you know, fuck that, Fox SF, you can't really go wrong with Shadow Fiend. Um, of course, here, bad execution from Queen of Pain as well, um, but look what happens, is that we get to play versus, uh, actually, we get to play against a hero, but we need to shut down, and on top of that, we are good against, right? Um, I want to say, mention that something that, you know, Infest is, um, she can just Infest my crib, so it's a little bit too hard to also play Enchantress versus um, Lifestealer. And right now, it's quite simple. Move around the map, get the crib, make something happen. I have a Turblade, great hero to sit. So, we just move. Look what we take. We get, take the Troll. Why do we take the Troll out of all the cribs? Skeletons can push waves and can push the tower. And on top of that, Net is really good with Turblade. We net him, and this guy's dead. And what we try to do is take the tower. I think this is a fine game um, to make Enchantress work. And I think this is not a great of an Enchantress game, just because Enchantress really struggles against high magical heroes, Hoodwink, uh, and South of Inter, two of those. So, I think that's five or six examples. I can't actually recall that... I felt are really good ways, you know, because you get to see that they fit sometimes, you know, but in the end, the important thing is to make a hero work, taking the enemy towers, rotating, shut down enemy heroes, and Chandra is a hero that actually scales really well in the mid game. Um, she, I feel like she's not that lane dominator compared to something like Crystal Maiden and Undying. And Chandra, you know, you need to be more creative, you need to be way more skilled to make this hero work. Um, and Let's talk about mid game. Mid game, you will either go for the direct, which is like a Pike and maybe Axe, maybe something like Dragonland, Stretch, and Pew Pew, everyone, if you feel like you need damage. Or you go for the indirect, that means Glimmer Cape, Four Stuff, uh, maybe then Tranquil Boots, something like uh, you can go for something like Mage Slayer, for example, um, and Lotus Orb, something that's utility and go for full enchant um, and just. You know, cut waves. Um, one, one thing that I didn't really mention is Enchantress is really good Russian hero because she can actually get to tank, right? So let's go a little bit. Um, I think that's a moment where we actually, I said, you know, um, then we actually try Roshan and all of a sudden, here's what happens. Um, then we just go on Roshan. Where is it, Roshan? I think at some point, yeah. I have the four stuff. I think four stuff. And right now, I say, please, come on, let's go, Roshan. I got this creep, a lot of armor, really good versus Roshan. You know, five armor. I think it used to be eight or something. Maybe I confused it with late. And all of a sudden, we just go, Roshan. Um, also, if you, for example, in is really good with Ursa because it also gives Roshan a tent, really good with TA because all of a sudden I can just tank Roshan. I think that's a really good example as well. You, um, Really good example to show why Enchantress like really solid pick. Um, in the mid game, I think a hero is quite solid, quite easy to play, way easier in the mid game because you have a lot of more levels to work with. All you need to do is make sure that you don't get blown up by enemies, you know, Scarlet Mages and stuff like that. You might even go for Ghost Scepter if you get one shotted by something like Templar Assassin or PA. And yeah, that's a guide. I think that's really good solid laning stages, both won and lost in my opinion that um is it's you know really good examples on how to play the hero let me know if you have you know 
for you know firstly thanks for watching uh i know that's probably gonna be this is gonna be a really long video probably plus one hour but you know Entendrix is not an easy hero to play so it requires time and a lot of a lot of effort uh before i close the video you know thanks for watching again um please you know do subscribe or anyway you know like comment any interaction with the video to know that you actually paid attention to that um this type of guides actually do require a lot of time a lot of energy and effort and you know a, a lot of coffee you know as you see and um if you want to see future guides you know please comment below and you know you can of course type your you know maybe comment on the hero that you would like to see i know that we get to see my games personally and this is why i can give you my thought process it's so easy to you know watch a pro player and say hey this is why he does that and you know justify everything um you know you know just you know how can i say that justify everything in a positive way this is why he does that and this is why he does that but only if it is your games you can know if you did something good or bad intentionally or accidentally you know it's something just happened and i think that this is why i want to show multiple examples on how to approach the laning stage just because i think if you just take one game and you just make it a guide probably that's not gonna guide and this is one of the things that i struggled the most when i was you know ancient you know and was stuck there for years you know one game make it guide probably didn't really work for me you know i was taking the game i was taking the tips for some reason didn't work out in my games and i feel like these type of videos that i haven't really seen anywhere anyway these type of videos that uh, would be the one that would benefit me the most to grow up as a player and get out of my mmr hell years ago thanks for watching i uh, hope you enjoyed that gg and i'll see you on the next video bye